Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Conversations in Consciousness with Lisa and Keith. I am Lisa Warner. I am the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing. And I am Keith Leon S., award-winning international best-selling author and new development award-winning filmmaker. Woo! Yeah, we won the award, Lisa. Woo! We won two, actually. <laughs> If you have not seen the film yet, The Inside Effects, How the Body Heals Itself, go look at it. Go to theinsideeffects.com and you will see this incredible documentary. And you will That's see right. me and Keith in the, this documentary together. <laughs> no charge to watch the film. Just put in your name and email address and it'll send you the link. Beautiful. So today's conversations in consciousness, we are talking about perspective. It's everything. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> so how do how do we look at perspective? One one way of that I like to talk about perspective is that if we were standing looking at something if there were four people standing on all sides front and back side to side and they were looking at one thing every single person would see something different because they were looking from a different perspective mm -hmm. if it's a building that we're looking at one side might be a brick wall the other side might be all glass. Another side might be concrete. Another side might have a big mural on it. And if four people were standing looking at that building from all four sides and you just ask, what does the building look like? Mm -hmm. They would all tell you something completely different and they would all be correct. Mm. Yeah, a fun way that I saw that demonstrated was in a workshop, and it was like the, they separated everybody to two sides of the room, and then they took out a beach ball, and they said, what color is the beach ball? And this half of the room said white, and the other side of the room said black. And they were like, but that's weird. Are, are you just seeing black, but you're calling it white? Maybe we don't. Even else, or is it actually black and it is like, no, it's, it's white. You know, people were just getting really like, Arr! about it. And then finally he just took and showed everybody that the beach ball was split down in half and it was white on this half and black on this half. And so he said, it's all about perspective. So in this case, everybody was right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> everybody was right. And then there's a weird thing when you add time in, time in as a factor. So like sometimes Mara and I, when we leave an event and we talked about something that happened, we remember that it happened the same way. But then years later, when I'm talking about it, she'll be like, that's not how I remember it. Wait a minute. We were both there. We literally talked about that thing on the way home and we agreed. And then years later, she's like, that's not the way it went down. <laughs> <laughs> she used to think that like, oh, is he making up stories? And then after a while, she, was, she got clear like, no, no, it's just we, over, we I, it's, I made up some stuff about what happened since then and maybe he did and we're probably both right <laughs> because it's how we saw it how we perceived it is the way that it happened and and now we're getting words involved so maybe it's the words that we're using to describe the same thing that are what's the difference <laughs> exactly you know it's it's really really interesting when I found myself facing cancer in the beginning, my perspective was, oh my God, I'm being attacked by some killer disease. And then after I got really quiet and I started to ask myself, you know, like, well, what do I actually know about what's happening to my body? Like, you know, like, what can I discern for myself? Pretty soon, my perspective shifted. And I realized, oh my gosh, my body is doing exactly what it's programmed to do. It's functioning exactly as it is designed to function. Mm. 
I'm not being attacked by some killer disease. My body is literally doing something to try to help me. Mm. Shift of perspective. Yeah. From that moment on, I have always been able to trust my body. Mm. When you can trust your body, you don't have to fear your body. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly that's what happened. Like I, when I had all, you know, those accidents that I had and then I had this pain and then it just stuck around for a long time. And I started, I did chiropractic and didn't work. And then I did acupuncture and didn't work. And now I already have didn't work story, right? And then I keep trying stuff, didn't work. And that just compiled on top, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. And then I got to the point where I was like, tried everything, nothing worked, right? Uh, 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 so that I just needed you to come in and shake it up. <laughs> shake it up. Well, let me offer a perspective of maybe why that didn't work. <laughs> and it was in that, like, things that you shared with me that changed my perspective completely of what the pain was and why it was and how I didn't need pills, needles, adjustments, any of that, because that's all outside stuff, outside stuff and that my body could perfectly heal itself if I just leaned in and changed my thinking, thinking about it and started using different words <laughs> right and accepted instead of resisted uh, for a certain amount of time so that was a change of perspective mm -hmm. and uh, and again there was like one or two things talk about this in the film that that were just like such a hawk of contrary to anything i had ever heard anybody else say but made more sense right and those things really started the shift in the perspective and then the trust right that everything that you were saying after that was also true right? exactly. changed my perspective and then it was only a matter of time before the healing happened because my body just went oh we're healing now not telling that old stupid story anymore huh good job all right let's go to work <laughs> right and like the symptoms the symptoms that our bodies produce are just our messages. They're the body responding to some input that we are providing. Mm -hmm. So if the body's making extra cells that they call a tumor, well, from one perspective, that tumor is a killer disease. And from a different perspective, that tumor is the body, the body helping you through a crisis, a, through a time of crisis. So healing and being sick actually look the exact same. Yeah. Right? Like if we have like vomit would be the body's way of saying, I can't digest this stuff that you just ingested. We got to get it out of there. So the body vomits. That's the healing of an indigestible morsel. I can't, the body says, I can't digest this. Right. We go, we've been trained to go, oh my God, now I'm sick. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> right? So when we're sick, we feel one way, but when we know we're healing, we feel a completely different way. Yeah. So perspective, people, <laughs> it's super, super <laughs> important. <laughs> It's important to our health and it's important to our happiness. One of the more kind of drastic short stories of, of a manifestation of that was when I was in TV production and we lived in, I lived in, Bur, you know, worked in Burbank, which was this big bowl. It was like mountains all the way around. And so when smog was in, it would just sit there in the bowl and it was just gross. And so because we all knew that and we could see physical evidence with smog, right? Then everybody was making up a pollen story as well. So it was like, oh, it's pollen season and we're sitting in this big bowl of pollen. And so everybody was all sneezing and hay fever and it's it's that season. Isn't that interesting? TV created a season so they could sell us stuff to deal with this thing. 
thought virus like you share thought virus it's the season of sneezing and coughing and sniffling it's hay fever season and i have allergies i have right and i was all in that and it was in tv production for years so a couple years of being in that season with everybody and all of us being miserable um i started going to the agape spiritual center room of michael beckwith's church which was reminding me of things that i knew ever since I was young, but had forgotten. And it was like, oh my God, like, that's a choice. I'm not going to make that choice this season. Like, I'm, it's miserable. Like, I don't even want to do that. So I was like, I don't have to participate. <laughs> and so I started putting words to the producers that I was miserable with every year. And they'd be like coming in, oh, and I was like, yeah, no. I'm not doing that this year. They're like, what are you talking about? I was like, you see me sniffling? You see me snotting or blowing my nose or any of that? My eyes? No, no. What the heck? Yeah, I'm just not doing it. I just decided I'm not going to do it. And, and some of them were like, you're crazy. But then some of them were like, really? That's a, that's a choice? And I was like, absolutely. Look, right? I didn't take anything. I just changed my mind. And some of them took it on and then their symptoms went away. And they were just like, thank you. Oh my God. And we had like many years after that, we're just like high five every time we saw each other going, what? Oh. And the people that said, you're crazy were miserable for the whole season. So that was one of the times that, you know, even my, my bosses who neither one of them had the allergies, but they just saw me think it, say it, prove it. And then other people actually do it too. And that's when they started asking me questions. <laughs> so, oh, nice. What do you think about this? <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> and it's funny because as as humans, we do need uh, physical demonstration, it seems like. At least that's what works really well. Like if you go to, right, when you go to seminars and they're trying to sell you something, they'll always show a physical demonstration of it, <laughs> right? And then nice. people see that and go, oh, Ooh, I want that. And then they run to the back of the room and they buy the thing, right? It helps sell, but it also helps sell us in our mind, which then if we see a physical demonstration, then we change our mind about it. And then it actually comes about, but it, it's because of the thought that we thought when we saw the thing, it isn't, wasn't actually the thing. <laughs> right. We have been taught that we will believe it when we see it. Right. Right. <laughs> Backwards. That's programming. <laughs> yep. Exactly. We will see it when we believe it. And what we see in our reality is a direct reflection of everything that we believe. Mm -hmm. This is why everybody's reality is different <laughs> because we all have different ways of looking at things, ways of perceiving, ways of believing. Yeah. I like to say, like it or not, that's true. <laughs> because I could, no matter how wonderful things are going, no matter how much money I have in the bank, right? When it's an up season and we're just like, yeah, we are good. I could still look around at certain things and just go, oh, okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> it seems like there's always at least something that i still have think stinking thinking about that it's time to shift that <laughs> right because we have a lot of things got a lot of things in our world right <laughs> right yeah because we're multi-dimensional beings yes we, we experience all kinds of different things so you know we are we are very multi-layered mm-hmm 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 mm -hmm. You know, as we see the angel wings in the back, we are truly non-physical beings. We are angels in human form. We are the entered, the living life force energy and consciousness that is animating these physical bodies. We are not these physical bodies, but we have become so programmed to believe that this is me right here rather than this is me with my <laughs> wings unfurled. This shift of perspective is key for our 
earthly happiness, <laughs> right? Because yeah. once we realize that we are angels, that we are eternal beings, we stop allowing life to bully us. We stop allowing ourselves to be pushed around by our fears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I love like even the word angel, right? There's so many perspectives to what that looks like. There's got to be somebody that if you say we're all angels, like you just did, they're like, what? So I would ask you, what is your definition of angels? <laughs> right? right? Like there was a, when I was on my angel tour with my book, Walking with My Angels, uh, there was a gentleman that I met who was like, well, tell me more about that. Tell me more. And and he was with me all up until when I said that I that I had experienced an angel myself and that and that we could get promptings right get uh, connect with our guardian angel he was like you tell me that joe average off the street could hear his angel or connect with the, an angel come on it was just the fancy people in the bible those they were people they were prophets they were you know special people basically that's why they saw angels but regular people can't See, right. see angels or evoke <laughs> angels what do you mean evoke right he just thought i was nuts but then he was a he was like a christian pastor who went into to prisons and also he had a church and he had a church service every sunday and i was like at the end of the service when you say if you want to accept jesus christ into your heart come on up people come up you pray for them you say jesus you know come into them and they accept Jesus, and then their life changes, right? And he's like, yeah. And, and then they start to say, well, you know, God told me to do this, or Jesus told me to do that. And he's like, yeah. I said, is Jesus in human form? No. Is he etheric? Yeah. Could you say maybe Jesus is like an angel, at least a form of an angel? Yeah. Okay, well, you're doing an angel evocation at the end of every service, telling them to call on an angel, and then they believe that they did. And so then they start to hear promptings and then their whole life changes for the good so and are they all special are they mark matthew luke john are they special <laughs> are they just regular people they yeah yeah they're just just regular people yeah and then he was like ah <laughs> <laughs> just blew the top of his head off <laughs> so he was just sitting there judging me, calling me wrong, and he was doing the same exact teaching that I was teaching using a different name. He's called it Jesus. I call it angels. I like to say you can call it whatever you want to call it. Like it doesn't care what you call it as long as you call it, meaning connect with it, right? <laughs> Remember, call on it, that inner part of you that already knows the answer to every question that you could ever ask. Right? The one consciousness that we were talking yes. about in our first show, that we are yes. that pure consciousness. And as that pure consciousness, we can exist as just pure consciousness. We can exist as pure light. We can exist with an angel body. Mm -hmm. you know, this etheric body is like, it's made of plasma. It's like the the intermediary step between pure consciousness and physical form. There's mm -hmm. we, we can't see it with our physical eyes, but just because we can't see it with our physical eyes does not mean that it does not exist. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're having pain or feel stuck in between your shoulder blades, you can close your eyes and imagine that your wings pop out in that spot and imagine that you have wings like Lisa has right now, right? And then even maybe feel them flapping, <laughs> right? Right? Oh, my yes. And see if that pain doesn't at least subside, if not completely disappear. Sometimes that's trapped energy in that spot and that part of you that knows, man, my wings are shut down, <laughs> right? <laughs> I got to open them back up. This is where I came from. This is who I am. <laughs> exactly. You know, when we allow ourselves to play there and pretend, mm -hmm. imagine, 
that's where all of the magic really is. We have been taught that if it's not physical, it's not real. If that's that's just your imagination, that doesn't mean anything. Well, unfortunately, for the people that have been told that, imagination is everything. Imagination yeah. is the tool that we use to see the unseen. Mm -hmm. And if we don't allow ourselves to utilize our imagination, we can't pull in from the the universe of infinite possibilities that mm. are yet to be made physical right we understand that we live in an infinite universe and all things are possible but just because they're all possible doesn't mean that we've all actually physically manifest them yet so it's with our imagination that we start to go out and we start to go oh you know we go shopping in the universe, like the gigantic <laughs> mall of the universe. Hey, I think I'd like to experience, you know, a new car or a new house or peace on earth, whatever it is. We go out and we look and we can see all the possibilities. Then yeah. we'll choose it and focus on it and then match our frequency with it. We open up that space to allow it to come into physical form. But if we don't ever imagine, if we never look beyond our, our present circumstances, we won't be able to manifest any of those things. Yeah, and I, I love, I think, uh, I used to say, visualize this. And, I, and I, I don't know if you reminded me or I just learned from you. Uh, I love that you say, imagine or play in or like other words for it because not everybody's visual right so if you're not visual and you don't see things then just imagine it everybody has an imagination we can imagine something happening and even if we don't see it when we imagine it we can say it <laughs> we can say it out loud or think it <laughs> we could think something into existence if that's your word for visualize or your word for imagine <laughs> right it's all it all because creation it's all creation so everything we have we created and uh and so that's why when i have something that doesn't feel good or that i feel like i don't want how did i how did, why did i create that <laughs> that's a great question to ask why have i created that if i get to the answer of that then most likely it'll, it'll leave <laughs> And then what do I want to replace it with? What do I want to replace it with? Yeah. Well, it's all about when when we've created something that we don't like, well, what's our perspective about that? Mm -hmm. Like what perspective am I, what perspective am I using to generate this? You know, am I coming from lack or fear or doubt or worry or, you know, what is it that's generating this and how do I shift my perspective so that I can say, Oh, oops, this is a patent. This is now a past creation, something that is already manifest. How do I just say, oops, let me create something else. <laughs> let me create differently. Yeah. And if we get to that perspective, then the when or the why, you know, None of that matters. That's all like way back there. <laughs> it's just like, oh, so what's my perspective? Now I can just move from there. I don't have to live back there. There's so much like there. People living back, way back there. That's a perspective back there. Like if all we really only have and can prove is this now moment, back there is just something at this point that we make up. We talked about that earlier, like two people could be back there in the same room and then have two different stories about what happened back there. And that's why how many what perspective am I looking at? What happened back there now will be the words that I put on it. And then that's why we're saying different things all based on perspective. Exactly. It's it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. that, you know, when we start to really make it a point to shift our perspective to really open up 
our angel wings, to start to notice that we are these non-physical beings and that we are connected to source and that ask and it is given is just the way the universe works. Mm -hmm. Thank you for always asking with our frequency what we're emanating forth, what we're projecting is always getting reflected back to us. Mm -hmm. So if we keep coming from the perspective of this is happening to me, then we stay in that victim mode. And but when we start to realize, oh, all right, what 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 frequency was I projecting? Was I projecting fear or doubt or guilt or worry? And the the situation is going to feel just like that energy. So then we have to switch our energy, switch our perspective. Oh, I could create something different. Shift my energy. Yeah, my music mentor used to say, "Every uh, Carl Anderson used to say, everything is happening through me, instead of to me, or all the other ways people say it. Say through me." <laughs> so that was him taking hundred percent responsibility, right there <laughs> with one word. Everything is happening through me. And he, he created a lot of incredible things in his life through him. <laughs> and uh, and I created him teaching me. You know, I, I saw Carl Anderson when I was a kid. He was in uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. It was a movie that, musical music movie that came out in the early 70s. I was really, really young. And I was just so infatuated with the guy that played Judas, his voice was just a beyond amazing. And this power voice. And I had like, I was a young little kid. I had a soft little angel voice. So I was like, what would it be like to have that much power in your voice? And I was just enamored by this guy. And so when he showed up like in the 80s and had a ton, ton of hits, uh, if anybody that listened to R&B radio growing up or like uh, those smooth jazz stations, you'll know Carl Anderson's work. Uh, if I played the songs for you, you'd be like, oh, oh, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, so I just, this guy for me was the, him and Stevie Wonder would probably be the two people that I was just like, God, I would love to work with them. <laughs> I would love to be taught by them. I would love to have them take me under their wing. And that was one of the things I wished when I was a kid. And I saw Willy Wonka and, and started just truly believing that you could just wish something and it would happen. So I kind of always kept that one spinning, Carl or Stevie Wonder, Carl or Stevie Wonder. And then I found Agape and like the, I think it was the first time that I went there that he got up and sang. Like they were like, hey, Carl, get up and sing. And there he was. It's like, oh my God, right? Okay, so how do I, how do I create him being my musical mentor? I started thinking. And then after the service, I was talking to somebody and I looked over and, and I saw him see me. And when he saw me, it was like, it, it was literally like he saw a ghost. I mean, and he just went, stay there like that. So all the people were around him telling him how great he was and doing all this stuff when you just sang in your Carl Anderson. So he was doing his best to stay present with them because that's who he was. He would just, if he was with you, he's 100% with you. So he said, stay there. So he kind of connected with each person. And then finally he said, I got to go. And then he came over and he was like, oh my God. And I was like, what? He said, you look exactly, I mean, could be a twin brother with my musical mentor. The one who taught me everything that I know. The one that took me to my next level and then some. Exactly. You look like him. You could be twin brothers. I'll show you pictures. And he's like, what do you do? And I was like, well, I work in TV production, but really I'm a, I'm a singer. And he's like, of course you are. I was like, what do you mean? And he says, it's so obvious that he's telling me that I need to teach you, that I need to work with you. And I need to take you under my wing and teach you everything that I know. Couldn't be more obvious because you literally look just like him. And I was, so what do you think? And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> and it wasn't until later when I 
connected with him and found out that he really believed kind of the same things that I did, that I was able to tell him, like, I wish that ever since I was a kid. So I don't know what happened first or what, <laughs> but for you to get that blatant of a message that for something that I wished, like, who cares why it happened? I'm just glad that it did. And then he took me under his wing and, and, and taught me, and took me to way beyond <laughs> my next level when it came to uh the way that i sing and and let music happen through me i don't even say perform because i don't perform i don't ugh, i don't i don't <laughs> it doesn't work when i perform or that's doing energy right trying to do something i'm gonna be a rock star i'm gonna be in a rock band i'm gonna solo i'm gonna do all that stuff that's all ego stuff. Like he taught me to just stand up there and then let everything go and then be what he would call be up there naked, meaning no preconceived thought, not having practiced so much that I knew exactly what I was going to do. None of that to just be in the moment and let the me that is connected to everything pour through. And as soon as he got me to actually do that, grown men who hadn't cried for 30 years weeped when I sang uh, people would come up after and just tell me like this transformation that they had just from me singing a song <laughs> right and it wasn't that surprising <laughs> and then he also taught me that no matter what someone said thank you thank you so much is the only response because what a lot of musicians do, and I was doing too, is let's say I felt like I I didn't sing that well, or I hit a bad note, or my voice cracked, or something weird. Uh, and if somebody said, "Wow, you were so amazing," tendency is to go, "Yeah, not my best day. You should have seen me last week," or "You didn't hear my voice crack," or any of that. He literally taught me that anything anything other than thank you is like I took. Like I took a Christmas gift that they gave me and threw it on the ground and stomped it and crushed it into little pieces in front of them. That that's what it's like if I say anything other than thank you. And he put that in my mind. <laughs> <That's> beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So perspective, right? Perspective. And and that that story that I'm sharing with you, that perspective. Uh, was taught to me also in another workshop that was another musical mentor. And there was a time where my voice cracked. I mean, honked, honked, like so bad. And it was traumatizing for me. And in their workshop, they did a process where we took something that was just absolute trauma to us that we would love to reverse. Like, have it have never happened, is what they said. And she brought these little caskets and we wrote down what we wanted to disappear from the universe and put it into the casket. And then we all put the caskets out and then we had a ceremony and then she was going to go bury him that night and claimed that because we had all agreed that this was what was happening together, that it literally erased it from the universe. So mine was a physical thing. Like I remember when my voice honked, going over to one of my musical mentors, Brenda, and saying, oh, my God. And she was like, baby, it happens to all of us. Let it go. It's happened to me. It's happened to Carl. It's happened to everybody. Just let it go. But I didn't. It was just it was traumatizing. And there was someone else, too, that I they had said, oh, you did a great job today. And I was like, oh, but don't, didn't, you know, remember that my voice cracked, right? And uh, And so after this process, the next Sunday, I went up to... Brenda, the musical mentor, and said, remember that time? And I even said the date that my voice honked and like cracked so bad. And I came up to you and you said, oh, baby, don't you remember? And she was like, no, no, I don't remember that. And I was like, no, seriously. But, and I said this and you said that. She was like, nope. <laughs> and I was like, no way. And so then I went and asked the other guy and he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And back then, every time that I sang or soloed, they uh, at the beginning it was cassette tapes, but then later it was CDs, and it was a CD time. Uh, I went back and I found the CD from that day. Oh. 
<laughs> and I listened back to the CD yep. and my voice didn't crack. Right? Wow. That is so cool. Right? Because <laughs> that is the type of demonstration that for so many years I had to give myself to be able to believe something like we're telling you now, right? I had to have such big manifestation <laughs> to to believe it and to where now like, oh, oh, why did I create? Oh, okay, let me change that. And then, then it shifts. Sometimes it's literally that fast. Something that somebody would call a seeming miracle, right? Those things happen all the time now. And so to me, they're not as a big of a deal, <laughs> right? Hey. Because I had so many of those things over and over and over again. If you read in my angel book, like that angel that worked with me had to do like miracles to get me to believe it. And then still I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> so <laughs> don't be as stubborn as me. <laughs> Trust that what we're sharing with you is true. <laughs> Let it in. Try it on. Right? Try it on. Start with something small. Right? And when it changes and shifts, don't doubt it. Just say, oh, okay, we're on to something. Let me try another one. And you kind of stack all of those, even if they're little ones, kind of stack little ones enough. Then the part of you that knows everything, right? And and really runs the show. Some people call it subconscious mind. It's just, it's the part, the part of you that needs proof, <laughs> I would call it, that needs proof, will get proof. Even if it's little, it doesn't know big or little. It just doesn't know the difference, right? I manifested a cup of coffee. I manifested a million dollars. No big deal. No difference to the to that part of us. Doesn't know ones and zeros. Just knows manifestation. That happened. That happened. That happened. So start stacking those little ones up. And then you'll start to believe bigger things could happen. Then bigger things can happen. Then you can get to where you can, oh, I don't know, have the very gnarly form of what people call cancer and get rid of it yourself huh like lisa yeah. did <laughs> or chronic pain for 23 years i said 26 in the film i did the math i think it's 23 uh <laughs> um, <laughs> just leave you right because <laughs> that was one of those things that was one of those things like i stacked a story of but i tried that but i tried that and it didn't work but i tried that and it didn't work and so i did the opposite of what i was just sharing with you I stacked a story. This doesn't work. That didn't work. That didn't work. That didn't work. Oh, nothing's going to work. That's what the part of me said, okay, I guess it's not working, right? So Lisa shared a few things with me that just went, like, took that thought and just smashed it, obliterated it, <laughs> got in there, like, got in there. And then I was like, oh, okay. Wait, my aunt did that. You did that. How many people have I seen do that? I could literally reverse something that was supposedly incurable and just did it in like warp time, warp speed. So why wouldn't that be a possibility for me? Especially if I'm a guy that like actually spent time with an angel. I mean, hello. <laughs> right. Yeah. It is and it was just a shift of perspective. You know, yeah. instead of I have chronic pain, well, pain is healing. Yes. Oh my God, my body is healing itself. Oh, the healing right. is the uncomfortable part. Oh, I'm stuck in the healing. Oh no. And every time I do something to, to stop the pain, I'm actually stopping the healing. Like that was just like, wait. I was healing the whole time and I kept putting the brakes on it, like and then blaming the whatever that person did. Like yeah. I keep recreating it not working by telling the story it's not working. Ah, that was just right. so cool. You know, <laughs> all of these perspectives that we have been taught, mm -hmm. you know, these the perspectives that we have. Yeah. Are very largely not even our own perspectives. Yeah. Like true. we just have the perspective because we've been taught to believe that. So we just keep rehashing the same perspective over and over and over again. Yeah. And we go, well, this is the way it is. Well, it's the only 
it is the way it is because you're creating it to be that way. <laughs> you know? It's yeah. like if you shift your perspective and you, you can create something completely different. Come around and walk around to the other side of the issue and see what it looks like from the opposite direction. Because yeah. every single thing, we live in this dual universe. So there are two sides of the same coin. One side is dark. One side is light. It's the same coin. Which yeah. side are you standing on? Where are you looking from? Yeah. Do you remember that the story? It was a, a little, last year when I had done an interview and I called you up and I was like, oh, man, it was going so great until this one spot. And then it just like fell apart and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't know what happened. And, and then like I sat down and I did a whole bunch of inner work. And mm -hmm. I was just like, this is not the way I want that to go. Blah, blah, blah. And then I was with you and Mara when we when the thing aired and we got to that. You. I was with you when you shifted it. We were hiking in Sedona and you were talking about it. And then you were that's when you said this that's not the way that I want it to go. Like the the words that physically literally shifted it, I believe, was what happened on that walk, like what you were saying out loud. And then we were all just like, Oh, oh, okay. And we just like agreed. And then yeah, so that's to then it aired so go ahead and finish and then it aired and it got to the point in the interview and i'm going like Ooh! and then it was a completely different part like all of it just it flowed it was just perfect it was like oh my gosh instead of this one asking me the question it was the other one that then asked me the question like it was like oh my gosh it all fit like just so perfect and smooth and it's like wow <laughs> We were waiting for it, wait for it. It never came. And then we finished. And we were like, where's the part? And you were like, it changed. <laughs> it totally changed. <laughs> so you can change your past. Yes, absolutely. And uh, my wife, Mara, proved that because when we kind of when we met, I, I was the one that kind of started teaching her things I had learned and spiritual teachings and all of that. And and she uh she had a, a blood test, right? She was took a blood test for this thyroid story, and um, and then she felt like like it wasn't going to be a good result. And then I was, you know, and, and then I was like, well, how do you want it to be? What do you want to create? Because all the other blood tests have said you have this thing, this thyroid disease, and she was just like one more of that saying she had the thing. And then I was like, what do you, how do you want it to be? And then she's like, I want it to be completely clean. And I said, then change it. And she's like, but they already took the blood test. And I said, blood test doesn't know that. Like, it's still part of you. It came out of you. You're still connected. It's your energy. You change your energy. It changes the blood. It doesn't matter if it's in you or not. She was just like, the heck are you talking about right now? <laughs> right? And, and I was like, so I explained it another way. And then and then quantumly and like from all different perspectives, the way my angel shared stuff like that with me, like I said it a bunch of different ways. And then finally she was just like, okay, okay. So I'm I'm changing my blood. And then she like imagined it being completely clear and free and perfect sample, you know? And then uh, and then sure enough, when she called the results, they're like, okay, the weirdest thing happened. <laughs> This literally shows nothing. Like we were just looking for levels of if the medicine was helping or not or whatever. And she's like, oh yeah, by the way, I haven't really been taking that for months. I didn't want to tell you, but <laughs> it was just it was just gone. So there, so that doctor then had a different perspective because he had told her, she said, I'm gonna reverse this. And he's like, No. Look at how said, uh yeah, it it can happen and he's and you're gonna agree with me about that or I'll find someone else. And then he was like, Okay, well I'm open. She said, Oh, that's enough for me. You're open to the healing. And uh so then when she came back and he gave her that result and, and she goes, So and he goes, Yeah, I can never say that again. <laughs> that he had because he said, I've well, I've never seen it happen. I've never seen anybody reverse this, but I'm open. 
So he literally said he can never say, I've never seen it again. And so that affected a lot of people moving forward, right? Because he would have to tell them, well, most of the time, but then there was this one time and they <laughs> would put a seed, right? That would put a seed in their head. Oh, maybe I could do this. <laughs> maybe I could care it myself. So I wonder how many times he saw it after that. <laughs> oh, right. Yep. Yeah, and a doctor tried to give me some liver thing. Like it was the one time that I was, after so many years of not ever going to a doctor, I had to go for a physical or something and I let them take blood. Stupid. I knew they were trying to give me something. So then he did. He was, like, and, and I mean, because for me, the reason I didn't give blood, besides the fact that I wouldn't believe anything doctor would tell me was at that point, if I gave blood, I would like, like yeah. about pass out, right? From something that, again, happened in childhood, right? Where a nurse told me to like close my eyes as tight as I could and say, ouch, 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 when there was a needle in me. Brilliant. So it just like really got in my cells locked in. And even as an adult, I would just be like, go back into this like blackout and see all these faces, oblong faces going down, 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 and have this bad trip, right? And so no wonder I don't want to give blood. Huh, imagine that. So I went through all of that and then he tried to give me something and I was like, no, 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 no. And he's like, what? I said, so you're seeing that in the blood. Okay, so I'm just going to do what my aunt did. Okay, as much as I hate blood being that whole process, like, ugh. I'm going to come back in two weeks and we're going to do it again. And then it's going to be gone. And he's just like, okay. <laughs> right. Cause there's some liver disease or something he was trying to get me. I think it was. And uh, so I just went off, did what I did, you know, whole complete, perfect. You know, every organ action function in my body is working perfectly. Every organ action function in my body is working perfectly. Spun that, put on colored glasses, did all the things I knew to do back then. And, uh, but mostly believed that all the things that I was saying and doing were going to make it happen. That's how really it worked. And uh, <laughs> I went back two weeks, went through the whole thing again. Uh -oh. And, uh, <laughs> and, and had it, uh, had it change. So, and it was completely clean. So it was like, I needed to show him that that could be done. And, uh, and, and it, it changed him. You know, that and the fact that I had met with him, like, I think it was uh, that time when I met him, I was really heavy. And then years later, I went back and uh, I was, I had released like 100 plus pounds and uh, from my body. And he was huge. Like, he was like scary. Like, how can you be a doctor and be that big? <laughs> Why would anybody believe anything you say? <laughs> Judgment, but one that I had. And, uh, and he told me how that had, shifted his thinking thinking about any you know diagnosis had it already shifted him and that then he saw me now standing there like half the man that i was met and he was like wow and uh and he was like i'm gonna do something about it i'm gonna do something about it and so i went back a year later not to not approximately a year not to let him take my blood or do any of that again but just to visit and see where he was and he had lost like 150 pounds released it and uh, I was just like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So so I changed that one's life, <laughs> right? Nice. Perspective. I changed his perspective. He yes. literally saw this thing happen, with the blood, and that, and just go away. And then he literally saw me go from this to this. And so he's like, maybe this guy's on to something, <laughs> right? Right? I mean, the when we take a look at the the way the medical model is set up, the doctors are taught a perspective when they mm -hmm. go to medical school. Yeah. They are just taught a perspective, which is based on germ theory, that mm -hmm. we have germs and diseases attacking our bodies. And when the body is malfunctioning, here's the pill that goes with this malfunction. And so, it's an old story. Right? It's an old story. We can trace it back to one man, <laughs> right? right? Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he created that story and then gave every gave all the medical people their money so that they could have their facilities and made his story the common practice. So even we can't 
blame those doctors. They're just regurgitating what they were told, even though it's so old, that information. And even then it was created to sell the pills. So yeah, it's uh, all perspective. And that's why there's so many people that when they do do some research, right? Even MDs, they start to read to, oh, wait, wait, wait. Because they're really, like in order to be an MD, a medical doctor and PhD and all of you know, all psychiatrists and all those things. Like their brain is kind of a research mode person. They just didn't know where to research something different. They just believe what they were told, right? But if they start to hear hear anything that makes them go, wait a minute, then they go off into research, and then that's why there's so many chiropractors, acupuncture, like people that were XMDs. Right? who the first thing that they kind of glommed onto, be it chiropractic or whatever, then they went, oh my God, that's another way. And it's better because it's not that, and it's newer. And so they get into being a chiropractor because it's a newer thing that, that they found out will actually move energy. Right? And more importantly, they start to tell people, they think it's the chiropractic, a lot of them, but when I do this, it opens up energy right so that everything is flowing again perfectly right the body has the ability to heal itself they teach that right i'm giving you the ability for, for your body to heal itself and then is it the adjustment or is it the fact that somebody gave you a demonstration going back to what i was talking about we love demonstration. A demonstration along with the words, your body has the ability to heal itself. If you buy in, right? And then they usually say eight or 10 or 12 times because they got to make money. Yeah. Right? Just do it once and then you heal is not a lot of money in that. So they're still in the medical model. Right? So it's like at eight to 12 times and then, then it will work. But it doesn't. It's like the how is not, uh, I learned, is not my domain, like how it happened. It's just making it happen. <laughs> the perspective of, I can do this. It's my, and with anything too, right? Right? Like money. Someone said, it is your divine birthright to have money. They were, it was a biblical thing, like gave me a scripture and all that. I didn't need the verse. I just, it was their conviction and saying, it's your divine birthright to be prosperous. And then I saw that person was prosperous. <laughs> they had stuff they didn't have. They, including believing that prosperity was just a, a thing that we are all born to have. And, and the only thing we need to do is change our thinking, thinking about it. And it'll just flow in, right? So it'll become an energetic match for it, and then it will just flow in. Perspective, everything we consider all day long and throughout stories, and it's always going to be perspective. That's why it happened, uh, right? Shift and stinking thinking, right? Opens up all possibilities. <laughs> so many people get locked into one perspective, and you know because there's right and there's wrong and there's only one right and one wrong so you have to be locked into the one right perspective but as we talked about in the beginning you could have four people in four different angles each seeing something completely different and they're all right so you know <laughs> we can't when we lock ourselves into a perspective then we're locked into that we can't have anything other than that perspective on that thing so i truly believe that any perspective that we have that is negative isn't ours exactly somebody else told us that somebody else sold us that somebody yep. else drove that into our brain programmed us with that because the part of us that is what we're talking about soul right uh doesn't believe that stuff would never would never say those things to us ever no yeah. we know that we can heal we know what we're made up of 
<laughs> we know that everything happens through us and and anything other than that is some other story some type of programming that we bought into or just we're told so many times like if you look at abusive relationships you know when a woman gets into a relationship in her power and then gets with some jerk who's just like you're nothing you're there worthless you're all you can only hear that so long before subconscious mind buys in right okay i guess that's true and that's sad and that's just like a huge uh, like demonstration of what we're saying in, in the opposite way so uh i did a actually did a book it was kind of like um vagina monologues but women who had been abused so um so it was like a a book that was done like that play where it was just women in treatment who decided to record all of their conversations and then we turned it into a book and so it's like seeing people come in with the story and the, the women that they were telling but then being around women who were starting to get empowered and then women who are completely out of it who are empowered in that group and then women who were teaching running the group who were had completely completely got out of that right so they're all levels which was kind of pretty cool right levels of healing from i'm here i'm brand new i'm a piece of crap all the way to <laughs> right and and them working that together and then literally as you're reading and get to know the women that were in the group and let's just call them characters right for the sake of like it's a film and then seeing this character grow through the book and have healing and what was said to create that healing and it was like the most powerful book that i feel like i've been a part of and certainly was grateful to publish <laughs> um, publish a, a work like that but again perspective so the other women helped change their perspective back to remembering who they truly were remembering there that they are strong and powerful and capable and can do anything that they put their mind to and all the things they knew before they met someone who told them a different story exactly as divine beings of light that we truly are we have divine intelligence we have divine consciousness and we have the ability to create anything we desire but we've just fallen in consciousness. The, the consciousness has gotten programmed and distorted. And we've just been creating by default. So yeah. now is the time for the great awakening. The great shift of consciousness is here mm -hmm. at this time. The age of darkness is over. The age of light has now begun. And it's really time for us to become aware of how our consciousness is generating our realities because we are mm. far 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 more powerful than we've ever been allowed to know but it's yeah. up to each one of us to manage our consciousness to learn to use our consciousness wisely yes yes so put this on your calendar and come back every week <laughs> because we will <laughs> tell you the truth <laughs> like uh Reverend Michael Beck with that agape, he used to say, uh, if if you want guilt, shame, right, not worthy, if you want all of that crap, you can go to any other church. There's one right across the street. You could go there right now. Get up and walk over there right now. You'll get that everywhere else. <laughs> but if you don't want that, you want to actually be told the truth of who you really are, then come back here. <laughs> we'll be here every Sunday. And uh, so that's where I went to to be reminded of the of the truth right for for many years because it was like for once somebody was saying the things that i've been i had been sharing with people since since forever right and had never heard from a pulpit and even then he didn't call it a church right he never used those words he said you know spiritual center of truth that's what he called it <laughs> because for him even church was like a Ugh negative connotation and came with the whole bunch of like the opposite of truth so much that he wouldn't even call it that so so i'd say well it's like a church but only like 
only where like the music is sounds like church music like gospel rock but it's positive all that stuff is positive and then in the middle of this concert of really incredible music with all the top musicians by the way every musician in that band plays with all the famous people they just sit in when they're not on tour right so the best band you ever heard with the most greatest singers and in the middle of this concert then this guy gets up and he talks about things that you actually believe <laughs> For a while, and then he stops, and then the concert starts again. <laughs> That's how I would explain Agape International Spiritual Center of Truth to people, because uh, they'd be like, "Do you mean a church? You go to a church?" I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> "Not really." <laughs> <laughs> you might call it that, but we don't call it that. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just that's what it was. Change perspective, change perspective, change perspective every week. That's why people came for the first time and they were just standing in a puddle of tears because it was like something he said would shift and have them remember when they remembered who they were. I just knocked down the walls of programming in one service, right? And then it was like, I remember who I am. And then the tears come. And that's certainly what happened to me my first time there. And Everybody who came, uh, you know, more than once, <laughs> we would just come back and say, tell me the truth, right? Remind me of who I am. And uh, and that's when I would go back anytime that I just, just needed to hear the truth again. <laughs> right? Because that's all that was going to come from, from that pulpit. <laughs> the truth of who you are, your whole, complete, and perfect. Every organ, and faction, every organ and function, every organ action and function of my body is working perfectly. That I learned from, from Reverend Michael and memorized it and then spun it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Anything that I had that was seemingly opposite of that, you know, oh, oh I feel like I'm coming. No, I'm not coming down with anything because every organ in my body is working perfectly. But take that, take that, take that. And I would just hammer it, man, hammer it with this affirmation. No, no, until it was like, okay, okay, all right, all right, I get it. And then done. <laughs> Sniffle's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Love change it. the perspective exactly beautiful so this has been another lovely conversation we hope you've all enjoyed this conversation in consciousness with lisa and keith <laughs> we love having these conversations we love just helping to help you remember who you are help you turn your light on help you open your angel wings so that you can remember that you too are a grand being of light. So yes. thank you so much for joining us this week. Keith, is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off? <laughs> that was it. That was so good. What you just said, uh, just, we will see you next time. And, and again, uh, share this with somebody that you know, and that you love and you would love to hear what we're sharing beautiful so until next time everyone create for yourselves a fantastic life yes. because you can <laughs> bye for now